Okay, week 10 then, it's Cheltenham Festival time. 29 action pack races over the next three days, plus a few thrown in later on in the week from the likes of Fakenham and Utoxita. And I've got Stu with me. How are you, Stu? I'm very well, actually, Martin, and yourself? Oh, I'm okay, thank you. It's a very strange place to be in the moment. Is England, it's red hot and pouring around at the same time. It's pretty odd. We've just had a big thunderstorm. Just watched the King George as well, which was a good race. And it's, yeah, it's a strange place to be, but I'm all right, but... Doug is not with us. Doug's departed. He's decided he's he's far too um, he's far too posh for jump racing now. He's just concentrating on the flat with his oysters and his champagne. Doesn't like the mud and the wellies and all that sort of stuff. So we're down to a two piece. Oh, lightweight duck. <laughs> there you go. You see, it's all that sunshine stuff. You can't cope with a potential bad weather. Every going and mud on his boots. So he's just gonna have another plate of oysters, another glass of champagne, and watch us on the telly. <laughs> So then, just you, just you and me in this this season. So you're doing the first six, and I'm doing the second six on the first two days, and then I'm staying here at Cheltenham for the final day, and you're going off in the helicopter to Utoxeter and Fakenham and wherever. I am. I can't be left too long at Cheltenham. Right. So let's get on to these races, then, shall we? Looks like it's going to be a really good, really good week. And uh, we open up with the Skybet Supreme Novices Hurdle, two miles and a half a furlong for novices over hurdles. Only nine or ten of them in there. Um, what do you like to look of? Um, I have to say, I'm surprised that Derek Hinton's got last stand, which is a top rated hurdler in, in the race. Um, no disrespect to you, Dell, but that's a bit of a strange one. Um, but looking down the card, Leon Van Rensburg's back as well with us this week. Does exceedingly well at, uh, at Cheltenham every year. So I'm actually going to go for Heart Moon for Leon Van Rensburg. Sorry for the rest of you. Hmm. What about yourself? That's not a bad call, that, because Leon does always do well at this festival. I think a couple of seasons ago, he won all the big all the major races so he's never he's never too far away it's one of them races this isn't it nothing really sticks out as being brilliant um i'm gonna go for a real outsider to start the day off paul Rhodes has got a horse in there that's never run over hurdles before so i'm gonna go for that montana which has been running over fences not been running that well so maybe it'll um, maybe it'll like oh, the, it'll like the timber a little bit better maybe so he, he does well at this meeting as well doesn't he so you can't go can't go far wrong tipping tipping paul a lot of the time no, exactly. No, you certainly would get some points if you've chosen him in the old competition. I think um, I think he ends up with three or four winners, I think, last festival. So uh, you'd be looking to equal that or at least better it. But that will then move us on to the next novice, which is the chase version, which is the Racing Post Arkle, over two miles. Again, just nine going to post there. A little bit more form in this field, I'd say. Um, what do you think? I know you go first. Well, I think it's going to be a quick fire double for Paul Rhodes because he's got North Wind and that's won twice one of, the, one of the last two times and it's the top rated I think isn't it as well so it's got to yeah, be yeah uh, does look good it's got to be right actually it's got the best form coming into the race I think Joshua would do well but it's been unseated on a couple of occasions so I'm going to Go stick the neck out for Slaney Fox or John Morgan. Yep, not a bad call that one. Ultima Handicap Chase, which has got a massive field, hasn't it? Is this a dual? This is a dual entry race, isn't it? So it's going to be a. I think it's twenty-one. Yep. It's twenty-one of them. Should be, should be good. You'll have fun commentating on this one. And the top rated one is well, the top two are potentially gold cup horses, aren't they? They're both Joshes, and they're rated in the hundred and seventies. So they're going to have to You're frightening for the rest of us. Well, it is, but it's basically turned it into a conditions race, hasn't it? Because I think you'll probably find you've only got about the top six or any handicap. The rest will all be running off the same weight. So that'll be an advantage to the sort of middle horses, if you like, but a disadvantage to the ones at the bottom. So, but you, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just, a, it's just the, 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 the way that it is. No, I but like you say, it's quite a big field, quite. There's a few people in there. I mean, while it's uh, for likes, is, uh, he came second over uh, on a G1 over soft conditions which we kind of got here today I mean it's a really big field um, you've got a course in distance winner have you sitting down the bottom there Fac on Melancholic I have and that's a that's a, that's a funny that's a funny horse that one because that one was supposed to get transferred out in the transfer out window and I went out and I came back too late and I only got like 10 minutes to do it and I did the other four and I couldn't remember who I was putting in for this one and I didn't get time to do it and the time was up so I had to leave him in um, could it be an omen <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been a moment already. I had to, I had to leave him in, or leave her in, should I say? So I did, and then I thought, well, how did it, how did it get in, in the first place? And so I went back and looked at my little book with all my trials in, and it was winning them all. So I just ran the things again with with the other horses, and it kept winning. But I tried it on a different track, and it didn't. It only ever won at Cheltenham. So the next, luckily, the next week there was a three mile chase at Cheltenham. So I put it in it, and it won. Good old horse. 
horses for courses. Yeah, and I've run it since, loads of places, and it's lost every week. So I just that was one of the first entries I put in this week was that one, and I thought, I'll stick that oh, in. It's got no chance because it's going to be out of the handicap. Oh, well, good luck with that one. Yeah, you yeah. just never know. If yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a Cheltenham specialist, as uh, plenty of horses have been, to, uh, might stand the chance, but I'm afraid I'm not going to tip it. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not going, uh, tip, not going to tip it myself because, to be brutally uh, honest, the chances of there not being another Cheltenham specialist in that field with that many in it <laughs> is pretty slim, so... Yeah, I mean, it's, it, I mean, the form's all over the place because, I mean, they're running over, you know, they've been pull-ups and uh, obviously falls and such like. I like Paul's in this, acquitted. It's got some, uh, always in the money in the last four races, looking to go one step better and get in the winner's enclosure, so I'm going to go for acquitted for Paul Rhodes. Yeah, we're going to do flip-flop this time because I'm going to go for John Morgan, Molly Massini, because that's another one that's uh-huh. always there and thereabouts in that one, about three races ago, didn't it? So. Yeah, no, it should be a good race. And obviously, uh, I'll assume there'll be a few pull-ups in that uh, that event you would think so probably including mine I would think because that's what it seems to do most of the time when it goes anywhere anywhere other than Cheltenham anyway so uh, it'd be like a mini gold cup that really wouldn't it because it's like three miles and it's a big field and a uh, bigger field it's probably a better looking race than the gold cup later in the week actually well that'll move us <laughs> to uh, the Stan James champion hurdle over two miles where uh, I'll get to call them home yeah the first so of the go s- I have to go straight in here because obviously there's a horse uh, called Mighty Stu Gray. I'd be foolish not to back it. It's been unfortunate last time out, but it ran over a, a chase event over the fences and it fell. But pre- prior to that, I'm pretty sure it took two hurdles. So, I, you know, I'm not going to look at anything else at all. It's the Mighty Stu Gray for me. Mm, well, it's fallen twice, hasn't it? So that rules it out for me, I'm afraid. I think the way that this... The way that this thing works if they fall on once they'll fall again if they've pulled up once they'll pull up again so i try to steer clear of horses that have, that have done that looking at, the, looking at the ratings and looking at what's in there and stuff i think this might be josh's race this time i think he's got the big show i think that's quite a pretty good chance obviously the main danger's got to be orange eyes from molly at silver but um, i think josh was southern he's got a he's two horses in a race before i've got to look around huge weights which will i'm sure but well, that is what will beat them this one of course is level weight so i think he'll get his I think he'll get his win this time i think josh will win this yeah maybe you're right with the big show there i wonder if he named that after the wwe wrestler the big show joshua doesn't uh doesn't strike me as someone that likes the WWF. But, uh, <laughs> I maybe. don't know. You never know what you never know what people like, do you? you, 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 you no, very true. I shouldn't make assumptions because <laughs> they make a, they make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't believe I went to poetry recital readings on a weekly basis, would you? But I do. <laughs> well, that will lead us on to that wonderful cross country race with Glen Farkless or Glen Farcical handicap chase. Over three miles seven, and like you say, I think there's plenty of uh, possible Grand National runners in this. It's not actually a, a massive field. I think it's twenty. There's a few in here that have not run very often. I mean, you've got El Distintivo mm. of Sirius Chu only run twice. Be My Princess by John Morgan also only run twice. Kind of makes me feel like he may well have laid this one out for this. I've got a horse in there that came second last year, which is Corsican Boy, but he's twelve now, and he doesn't really like the to soft conditions. So. Um, I was very fortunate last year on the first day because it was firm. If we remember rightly at Cheltenham where I picked up a, a couple of winners, this year it's definitely uh, not in favour of my horses. <laughs> I also do notice that uh, last year's Grand National winners in there. Miramas Dur does say he's, in, he's put it in there really to try and get the weight down. And he's, he actually mentions in the notes, only good at the course that matters. So it's, I assume he's looking for a back-to-back national for very, next week. But if very, I had to stick very on gap, it, it would be my... Be my princess. Be my princess. That. Um, it's very difficult to win Grand Nationals on a trot. Paul Rhodes had a horse last year that um, had a go at it and didn't quite manage it. And I think uh, James Shea, who's not with us anymore, he's not in the league anymore, he tried to come back and win it with his as well. And they, they, they just don't win it a second time. It's almost like real life in the fact that once you won it, you've once they seem to be it, that's it. You don't want to win it again. Um, now you've given that a kiss of death now, and that's a shoot next week. That mirror master. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a big, it's a big field, but it's not as big as it could have been, I suppose, because there's a lot of long distance races this week, isn't there? You've got that uh, four and a half mile that we have that's been renamed this season coming up later on in the week. You've also got the 
Midlands National New Toxeter, and you've got um, Somerset National. So they're a little Somerset, bit, yeah. a little bit shorter trip, but fortunately, there's no Moore's Millions qualifiers this week. Otherwise, we'd have been having five runner races. I think so. Uh, this should should be interesting. This one, um, I'm going to go for Sounds of the Marina for Darren Thompson. Yeah, no, it's got a lot of weight, but early part of the season. But it's pretty much, t- I know, yeah, coming fourth and seconds kind of form, but I'm pretty sure at the beginning part of the season that was running first, 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 first. Well, he must have been right. doing something to, to be running off 152, mustn't it? So, uh, yeah. he must have done something good. He's got a lot of weight. Okay. It looks like it could Choice. be a bit of a class act. Well, that'll bring us on to the old mayor's hurdle, the David Nicholson. It'll be my last commentary of the day. It's a group two hurdle over two miles on four furlongs. And uh, quite a nice field in here. Um, I know my horse Doug's Plastic Paradise um, it won it last year. I don't think it's going to win again this year. The ground's not ideal for it. Good to soft. It, it does like the firmer ground. But you never know. It won last week, a group two. And it beat a couple of these. The right stuff of Joshua beat Black Penny, Miss Scotland. So it's ahead of uh, some of the better trainers. But like we say, to win back-to-back at Cheltenham. Probably is not going to happen. Yeah, so if I had a... to stick, no, come on, let's be let's be truthful. The chances that I would win a back-to-back race at Cheltenham on equal weights, maybe in a handicap, but not on equal well, weights. If this, was a, if this was a handicap, you'd be giving weight away, so you'd have less chance. So you're, actually, you're actually well in, well, really. No, well, no, is it? No, come on, he's won one race this season. He's run nine times and he's still on 164. <laughs> it's no good, Sorry, pick, no good picking uh, on the handicap. It don't work. He don't take any notice. He did some dreadful things to my horses last season, but it's not stopped him doing it again this season. But, but he probably did, deserved it, though, Martin. <laughs> does it, he does it to everybody, though, so we can't really complain too much. <laughs> no, as long as, you're, as long as you're fair to everybody, that's exactly right. As long as you give them the same penalties, we have no problems. So, if I had to pick one... Yep. Tricky one, but I think this is going to be somebody out of the. I think Blue Danube for Kevin Meanham. First time it's gone over hurdles, though. But, uh, but you never know; it could just surprise. So I'm going to still go for Blue Danube for Kevin Meanham, even though I know it's his first time over hurdles. Well, this is the first time we're going to agree then, because I'm going for it as well. Because I think he's. Oh, he's, yeah. what um, a surprise! I think he's 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 got this set up ready for this one. I think because oh, there, there isn't there aren't really too many two and a half mile options this week, so maybe he didn't have much choice. I've had to put my bon shots in there because it's a two and a half mile chaser and there isn't really a two and a half mile chase for it to go in so that's had to go in the hurdles as well when I didn't really want it to but Blue Danube does look, to be, pre- does does look to be pretty good on the ground I've just noticed Joshua Sutton obviously likes it very soft so uh, the conditions are not ideal for that one but you never know I know he only just Doug's Blessed Paris only beat that just by an inch last time so maybe that's the right one but then that's the right one alright the Close Brothers Novices Handicap Chase is next and this is uh two and a half mile novices chase big field for this again because there's not many options for two and a half milers this week oh you not look of in this consequence of stars of joshua is obviously uh, a better hurdler than a chaser but it's got a pretty good mark for a chaser of 124 who else is in there levadotti for darren thompson yeah darren thompson's gonna obviously yeah, come somewhere along the line and get a good race yours right on pony needs further okay let's let's go for levadotti or levidotti levidotti Maybe not Darren a top weight. Got to give, got to give weight away to everybody. This is a handicap, so that's probably going to screw no, it a think, little bit. No, I, do, I don't. Sadly, I'm a great believer that most of the top trainers can carry twelve stone round. They can. Their horses are that, that they're that much better than the mid to, to lower end. So I don't think, to be honest with you, in a handicap, it's going to make any difference. I'll say to you now. I bet there's at least three winners. No, two winners. Let's not shoot myself. That of what a win off top weight. Over the Cheltenham Festival. Well, well yeah, probably, there probably will be. That's not as, not, not as brave a call as you'd like to make out it is, but um, oh. <laughs> it's, still, it's still difficult to give white away in this in this game sometimes. It does stop quite a few of them, but um, I'm not going to say it's going to stop Lebedotti. Um, All right, well, what are you going to pick, though? What am I going to pick? Well, it's a difficult yes. one, really, because if you start looking looking down it, there's nothing that really looks that brilliant. I would have gone for insomnia, but Molly at Surfer seemed to think it's got no chance, but I think he could be just trying to pull a bit of a fast one there. So I'm going to go for insomnia. It will fall asleep. <laughs> well, we shall, we shall see. Well, your second commentary of the day is going to be the Neptune number eight to my five novice hurdle. Yeah. It's a very small field in this one. 
It is. I'm just, amazed this this season about how many sort of really small fields we get. There don't there doesn't seem to be a great deal of sort of two and three quarter three mile horses around this year. A lot of the three mile novice chases have only had four or five runners in all season. And I wonder if that's more to do with the fact that novices rather than distances. It could be, but I think people are getting fed up with the horses pulling up this. They're they're pulling more two milers and more two and a half milers in because you put a three miler in these days and. It's a 50% chance he'll just pull up for no reason at all halfway around the track. Um, yeah, no, uh, they're even pulling up in the last couple of furlongs over the mm. last couple of weeks. It's 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 a, it's a real it's a real pain in the neck, really, because you you just you just don't know. You're thinking, well, if I run it over two mile and six, it probably won't pull up. But if I run it over three miles, it probably will. It's a bit odd, but anyway, this is yeah, it's a small film. But I think Meandre will take this for Paul Rhodes. It's, not a very no. brave selection, but um, it just looks no, head and shoulders above the Kingdom it? of the Lord, uh, of our Lord. I think, you know, that's a hurdle of chaser. Run on anything, probably. Run over anything. Run through anything. So now I'm going to pick Joshua for that one. Okay. So we've probably got that one sorted between the two of us, and I would think. Yeah, maybe it's a little straight forecast there. <laughs> maybe reverse. Yeah, and then we go to race nine, which is another one. This is a three mile novice chase, and again, there's only eight of them. I th- would have thought a lot of people with novices will steer clear of some of these races. Let's be honest, I haven't uh, put anybody in a grade one, to be, to be honest with you, because the chances of, you know, unless, I don't know, to be honest with you, very, very hard. Very, very hard at Cheltenham to get a winner. To, it is. I mean, I've never, I've never had a Cheltenham winner yet, so this is my third season. Uh, I've never, uh, never even come close to having one, so uh, I'm hoping I can do something about that this season. I've got one or two, and I think might have a bit of a chance. Um, I haven't got anything in this race. I haven't actually got a three-mile novice because I took my three-mile novice out at the transfer window, and then when I put them in, as I said earlier, I did it in a rush, and I forgot to mark any of them novices, so I've only got about half a dozen novices in my stable anyway. Um, but I probably wouldn't have run anything in this because... If you remember back to a couple of seasons ago, we had John Morgan on the preview show thing, and he said he he makes his best horses novices because he thinks that they've got more chances to win races if they if they're novices. So well, it's sort of a bit backwards. The novices are better than the better than the open horses. Uh, so this will probably got better horses than we got in a Gold Cup on day three. So yeah, it could be right. It could be right. And I suppose, like you say, they're going to go around the equal weights most of the time. I don't know if you do you get a penalty for winning a G one novice in the next race. You won't get a you won't you won't, you won't get a penalty in a group in a, in a group one. If this was a group two, you'd get a group you get a group one penalty if you won a group one. Oh, they won't, they won't give you a they won't give you a group one penalty in a group one. Uh, it's, 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 it's level weights. Although for some bizarre reason in this SO six league, we run all the novice chases off a stone light too light a weight. I really don't know why we do that, but. I don't suppose it makes that much difference because everybody's off the same, but they, they seem to run them all off 10 stone instead of 11. I don't know why. I'm sure somebody will tell me it was a rule that somebody made up years ago and nobody's bothered to change it. I do, do you want to know what it is? Because <laughs> I know. Oh, do you? <laughs> it's, it's, more, it's sadly more to do with the race kit, race kit set up. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's nothing to do with uh, a decision by anyone. Uh, the race kit doesn't give us a graded novice options. It just says novice, and on novice, for some reason, they're running at 10 stone 8, 10 stone 11, I think it is. That's just the way it is, sadly. Well, they, don't, they don't do. They don't do that really. So anyway, people are fed up of me banging on about what's real and what's not. So I'll just be quiet and tell you that in this race, I think the winner will be. Whew, I don't know. He says, having said that, <laughs> novices are better. These lot don't look very good, do they? They've all fallen over or unseated or pulled up. At least was the only one that hasn't. Is fine fettle, and that one's the lowest rated in the, in the entire field. So I don't quite know what's going on there. Battle at the Op Gates, I think. Joshua Sutherland is. Okay, well, I'll go against you with Hot Port for Paul Rhodes. I wonder if that's named after the drink. It might be, or it could be somewhere sunny. He likes to go on his holidays by the sea. That's what I was going to say. That could be Hot Portugal. (laughs) It could. Okay. Anyway, race 10. That's the Coral Cup handicap hurdle. Mm. Two mile fives. Um, Nice field here. Nice, yeah, big field for this. Good, good. And is it, you could have more than one runner in it, so I can give you an option. No, it's only General Paul Rhodes and has landed. Then Hooven Light for John Morgan just below them. In fact, the top four trainers, aren't they? They hold the top four positions. And just Molly Itz and Leon. So it's, and then you're there with Jessica Rabbit. Well, yeah, oh, Jessica no. Rabbit won, won, won a maiden the only first week, and I thought she was going to be a superstar. And then she's been... Not that brilliant since, and then last week came out and won again. So maybe running back, running back into form just yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah so. that's what you want. So who would you choose in this? I'll let you go again. 
first. Well, looking at the thing, I mean, you get, obviously you've got Attorney General there, haven't you? That's won three races on the trot, so you've got to be thinking about that. It's going to have a chance, but that's going to push everything probably under about Scooby Snacks out of the out of the handicap. So rules out quite a lot of the ones down toward down towards the bottom. You couldn't fancy anything but you couldn't fancy anything below Sorry. Holly. Couldn't fancy anything below Holly West because they'll just have to give away too much weight. Oh, I reckon I don't want to be boring and just keep going for the for the same people all the time. So I've got a feeling that this one you could get some value out of Scooby Snacks for David Robertson. Just about yeah. getting the arm running off just about the bottom weight but it'll be just about the right weight for it so it's probably the one best treated if you like handicap wise so that's the one i'll go for go for scooby snacks yeah attorney general not a lot of horses in uh, the national hunt i've had several i've commentated on over the past week three weeks that have been looking for hat tricks and more i don't think attorney general will win um, I think he'll be carrying too much weight for a change. Now, I'm going to go for Black Rain for Molly at Surfer. I think that'll get the extra 20 odd pounds that'll make the difference. Yep, not a bad call, that. And then we're on to the second real big feature race of the day, the Queen Mother Champion Chase, two miles. Yeah, one that Paul likes to win, I do know this. Um, if we go back to uh, a couple of seasons back with that horse, what was that horse called? He went on about for donkeys. Oh, Matt the Knife, wasn't it? Matt, That's Matt it, Matt Matt the knife. Knife. <laughs> Just about unbeatable, wasn't it? Until it until it went it to Liverpool was. and tried two and a half miles and it got beaten by something or other. I can't remember what it was in there. Yeah, no, I do remember well. But looking at it, I'd like to think Penny Fiction was the one, but it just unseated its rider last time out. Because obviously the conditions have changed. It's It's rained during the coral the coral <laughs> handicap and now the conditions the old the yeah old i think we uh, <laughs> i think we need i know we're not allowed to say things like this because people start getting no, into, into a cold sweat don't they about changing right. things in a national hunt but i think we need to have a word with gray and say now we've gone up to 12 races a day we've got to adjust the weather and the card so that they reflect 12 races a day as well because we've got sort of situations where it's good to soft for the first 10 races and suddenly it's heavy in the space of half an hour and I think on day three we end up with the gold cup as the first race so it just needs tweaking I mean because we've gone up from 10 to 12 and that's why it's done it so um, I know he don't like changing things but that's what I think he might have to uh, try and do something about it because it's consider yeah no trip anyway I'm, I'm poking my head out for um, Warhead for Paul Rhodes it's a 160 rated uh, chaser. It's there with Blank Doors and Madison Page. So, oh no, Penny Fiction for John Warren's 174. That's scary. Gorilla Driller. Gorilla Driller. Not Gorilla much Driller. form. Can't go with you on that one. Well, you, you see, Leon's been, been, he's been cagey this season. He like disappears for a couple of weeks and he comes back and he disappears again. So, yeah, you know, we don't really know how, how, how good they are some of these. And, um, I just remember back a couple of seasons ago, he won all these big races. I think he'll, and don't forget, he is probably one of the few people in the entire league who plays it the opposite way around to everybody else. He runs his jumpers and then he puts jump cast offs in the flat, whereas a lot of people do it the other way around. So, yeah, no, true. If you, it's, it's one of them things that if you can't make your mind of it, nothing immediately sticks out. There are certain go to people, and um, when it comes to the jumping, Leon Van Rensburg is one of the go to people, so I don't really fancy anything that much in that race, to be honest. So. I'll go for Griller Driller. Okay, and that moves on to the last one of the day. And the last one for you. It's a £75,000 year of a national hunt chase over four miles. Yeah, this is another one of those four miles that's snuck in, hasn't it? Because in, in reality, this is a novice race, but it, we don't have it as a novice race. Cause I don't think there'd be any four mile novices in it. <laughs> they probably only have two runners. So uh, it's a good idea that we have it as um, sort of a, a, yeah. low, a, lower, a lower grade. I think it's top rated 120, isn't it? It's um. It means yeah, it's I, didn't, I didn't notice that, but you're probably right. Which means it's um, not. It's which has obviously kept it. Which is actually gets quite a small field. That's uh, for a four mile. I mean, what is it? Two, four, six, eight, ten, what, eleven? Um, which is quite small for. A, but as you said earlier, there's plenty of long distance races this week. And I'm going to stick straight out of Southern Quest, Kevin Meenham. Right. Well, I'm going to go for a horse that would never ever be called this in real life. Nobody would ever call a horse what this horse has been called. In, 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 in this. You see if you can tell me which one it is. No, I've got no idea. Whitney. It's Christmas Whitney. Christmas Aria. Why would it not be called Nobody Christmas Nobody ever call a racehorse Christmas because they try to gear up the breeding so the horses are born as soon after the turn of the year as they can because yeah. all racehorses age on the 1st of January. Now, if you have a foal born on Boxing Day and you get sort of, oh, it's born at Christmas, let's call it Christmas Aria, that horse is born three days later. Basically means it's racing 
career if, it, if it's, if it's going oh, to be a, it's it's going to be a fair. Well, that's the way it works. <laughs> it's, it's the way it works. I can't remember what it was. It was a why film. Can't all, why can't they not all be just turn on their birthday? Because it would be ever so confusing. Well, can you imagine that? You had the derby and after working out whether it was a three or not. <laughs> that's well, not no, it's only three on that day. If it's what, birthday, yeah, it's that's just, that's, for that's tough, isn't no, it? No, changing halfway through the season. No, that's that's, that's the way. That's the way that they, they have they have to do it. And there was, there was a film. I can't remember what it was. Um, and it was all about somebody who'd done some dodgy stuff, murdering somebody. And it was all based around this racehorse because this foal had been born and hidden it for a week. And this goes. I think this probably goes on really. <laughs> if you sort of like got a potentially million pound racehorse and it happens to be born on the thirty first of. December, I think you sort of like hide it away in a barn somewhere for a couple of days and then announce it's just been born because there's this this woman wanted said I could never understand why they didn't call it Christmas Blaze like I wanted to and, they, and, that, and that was the, it was given away and they all got caught so ah interesting so you're never going to get a race horse called Christmas trainers aren't they <laughs> <laughs> so there you go so <laughs> that was interesting so you're going to pick Christmas Aria are you I am yeah. I think it's going to win. Darren Howes is always going to pop up with a win. The biggest danger for me in that race with picking that one is that I'm doing the commentating. And when I do the commentating, Darren Howes' horse is usually full. So that could be a bit of a... Yeah, but everything's different at Cheltenham. It's the omens. They all play in. The moon's in the right position. Stars are aligned. So that'll be that'll be a perfect end to day one, I think. We totally, once and for all, shatter that um, jinx. And Darren Howes can get his... Um, well, good luck with that. Get, get his winner. With you and obviously Darren. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's it. We better get on with the uh, get on with the old races. We'll let you get up to the old um, commentary box. I'm going to um, find somewhere, somewhere nice to stand or sit and watch it. And um, I'll see you later. Not, not, thank you. Bye-bye.